have you seen anti-Muslim protests on campus? I have seen, we have, we have had pro-Israeli demonstrations on campus. No, 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 have, have you seen, seen one against Arabs? No, I have not. Have you seen one against uh, Palestinians? No, I have not. Have you seen against one against Jewish people? Have you seen a protest? No. There has been a rise in targeting and harassment against anti-war protesters because it's been pro-war and anti-war protesters is what it seems like, correct? Correct. There has okay. been. Okay. Thank you. Merely one day after Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar grilled the president of Columbia University over the treatment of pro-Palestinian protesters on their campus. It turns out that Omar's daughter has been suspended due to her participation in organizing a pro-Palestinian protest at Barnard College, which is associated with Columbia. Hmm. Now. Jenk, I'll let you weigh in before I give you the details yeah. on what happened. Boy, that seems like an interesting coincidence. Yeah. Well, let's find out if it's based on principle or if uh, she criticized Israel and now the deans would like to protect their jobs. So anyone who criticizes Israel has to be removed from campus. But I mean, honestly, the hearings that the House has had, the hearing is only focused on demonizing pro-Palestinian protesters, right? Yep. Like, it, there's this facade of, oh, we want to do something about anti-Semitism on campus. And if I genuinely believe that was what this was about, then I would be in favor of it. I'm okay with those types of hearings. But it seems to have a chilling effect on the ability of students to assemble and protest on campus. Yeah, Pro, pro Palestinian specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So look, I'll get into it in a second. I've got a Jewish nephew that goes to college. There is some issues, etc. Uh, having said that, is that what this is about? Zero percent. So they uh, are they kicking out Israel people that are in favor of Israel and all of their massacres and all of their war crimes because of hate speech? No. No, the deans were sent a message, shut the anti-war protesters up. And here they are shutting the anti-war protesters up. And that's what this is in all, and look, one more thing on that, Congress is a joke. Yes. So yesterday they passed a resolution saying, condemning anyone who says from the river to the sea on the Palestinian side, and that they're anti-Semites and the worst people on earth. Netanyahu said from the river to the sea, and no condemnation, in fact, they're hurrying up right now, all of them, the Republicans, Democrats, hurrying up to send him another $26 billion so he could do from the river to the sea. So genocide for the Palestinians is loved by US Congress, can't get enough of it. But if you say anything against Israel, there's gonna be consequences. So let's talk about what got Ilhan Omar's daughter suspended from the college. So dozens of students had apparently camped out for two days on the university's campus as part of a protest encampment over the Gaza war and the university's investments toward Israel. Now police were called today to break it up and they did break up this sit in style protest. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. And so far, more than 100 people have been arrested on a preliminary charge of criminal trespass. Okay, this is serious. and. This is definitely gonna have a chilling effect in regard to something that I think should exist on college campuses, regardless of which, which political side engages in it. Protest, debate, you want that on a college campus. Like, I'm, Look, people are gonna accuse me of being one-sided and you can go back years ago when we covered the protests meant to shut down speeches by people we disagree with, Ann Coulter, Ben Shapiro at Berkeley and other you know university campuses like that. I was against that. If you don't like the speaker and you don't want to hear what he or she has to say, just don't go. But it's a college campus where your you know your thoughts, your opinions, your worldview should be challenged. You should be introduced to ideas that you do find offensive and you should be able to fight back against those ideas with your own speech. But anyway, that's my point here. Going back to Ilhan Omar's daughter. So earlier today, Omar's daughter put out a statement on X. I wanna read it to you. I'm an organizer with CU Apartheid Divest. Um, in my three years at Barnard College, I have never been reprimanded or received any disciplinary warnings. 
I just received notice that I am one of three students suspended for standing in solidarity with Palestinians facing genocide. Now, uh, Hersey, who is the daughter of Omar, uh, was an organizer with Columbia University Apartheid Divest, uh, the student coalition that has been pushing the university to cut ties with companies that support Israel. Such divestment is the key demand of protesters in the encampment. She's also involved with the Columbia chapter of Students for Justice in Palestine, one of two student groups that was suspended in November for holding unauthorized protests. Mm. Now the other two students, I wanna name them, include an 18 year old Barnard freshman. Her name is Miriam Iqbal and a 21 year old Barnard Jr. Sof Dinu. Now in an email sent to those three students earlier today, the Dean of Barnard, Leslie Greenwich, told them the following. This decision is based on information received from Columbia University Public Safety that you have been involved in an unauthorized encampment on the Columbia University campus and you have not ceased participation in this unauthorized unauthorized encampment despite repeated requests from Barnard and Columbia on April 17th, meaning yesterday, that you do so. So uh, apparently they weren't surprised that they were gonna be met with some retaliation. Uh, Hersey and other students told the spectator that they were expecting a suspension after the administration had threatened them just yesterday. Let's watch. If you don't disperse it and follow the things that they're asking you, then you're going to be potentially subject to sanction at birth. So if you would like to come over here and talk with us, we are over here and we will wait a few minutes if you'd like to do so. Safety no. Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! All right, and I have more from uh, the college and, and their statement in just a moment, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to weigh in, Jenk. Yeah, so uh, like I said, I've got a nephew uh, who's Jewish and it, and he uh, explained to me that, yeah, it's, it's a little bit tough on college campuses, or at least on his college campus, it's anecdotal, but it rings true based on things that we've seen. Where you know there are some kids threw uh, eggs at the Hillel house and harassing some of the Jewish students going in. Now you show me an instance of that, and I'm ready to regulate, right? Because we're not gonna have anybody get harassed, whether they're Jewish students, Arab students, or any other students, okay? So you show anybody targeting someone, physically harassing them, or following a person to their house, anything like that, I'm 100% on board for sanctions and, and punishment, okay? But here, there's not even a charge of anti Semitism. Right. Now we're punishing because we don't like that they're protesting Israel. We don't like their message. Yeah. yeah. And so what is their message? And this is why they're super triggered. Boycotts and divestments work. They worked in the case of South Africa and they started on college campuses. And eventually business interests in South Africa said we're losing enough money that all right, you know what? The money's worth more to us than the racism is. So it changed South Africa for the better. This is the equivalent of coming in and going, how dare you try to help black people in South Africa? You're the hateful one. You're hateful against white people. That's what you're getting kicked out, okay? Come on, this is insanity. And so I told you when they were doing the original hearings with the deans of Harvard, uh, MIT, and Penn, that they were saying, and there was, remember, at that point, there was no actual protest they were referring to. At least Stefanik made up a hypothetical. A total hypothetical, okay. yes. And they're like, hypothetically, if this were to happen and this chant were to happen that Netanyahu has already said and done, Right, we love Netanyahu, we're gonna send him money, but you would punish the students, but right? But let's be even more specific, Cenk, because yes, I mean, all members of Congress have an issue with the statement from the river to the sea, even though I think most people who say it are not literally meaning let's like totally annihilate Israel and all of the Israelis within it. I think they mean something entirely different. They want a one state solution where everyone's treated equally. I think that's, you're in fantasy land if you think that's gonna happen. But I, I get where they're coming from and what the argument is. What Stefanik specifically made up as her theoretical is students calling for the genocide of Jewish students. Yeah, it's just never. No, that's, it didn't that, that's not happening. <laughs> okay, and look, look, here we are. So the deans are all now panicked. I have to make sure that no one criticizes Israel. Right. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my job. We just saw it happen in a spectacular fashion, a hypothetical that didn't even happen, and they give the correct policy of their of their campus, and they're fired. So now the new policy is 
shut up about Israel. We're gonna spend them, spend Colombia money and your money on that. We're gonna send them all the contracts and everything else that we're doing. And we're gonna say, yeah, apartheid of five and a half million people. And now Netanyahu says, I want from the, from the river to the sea. And he's in the middle of doing that genocide. And he says, I'm never gonna give the Palestinians a state. So permanent apartheid. And if you dare protest that in the most effective way, economically, we're gonna kick you off campus. Because this is cancel culture. And if you, did, the number one purveyors of cancel culture is the Israeli right wing. If you disagree with Israel on anything, they will try to get you fired if you're a professor and kicked off of campus if you're a student. So now the good news is this is normally when I go on a rant about, hey, what happened right wing? But it turns out, no, now a lot of the right wing go, yeah, wait a minute, that is cancel culture. Yeah, and I have a lot of respect for people who are consistent in their principles. Even if their principles mean supporting something, well, maybe not supporting, but defending the right for an opposing political group to do something that they want to enjoy themselves when the time comes for them to engage in you it. You know what? So, since the right wing is largely being consistent on this, and great credit to them on that, and if it hurts your feelings that I'm being honest about some portions of the right wing, are you sure you're the objective one? Okay, but now the people I have to criticize is liberals. What happened now? Because I know tons of liberals like Bill Maher and and yeah. other people like that who are like, oh, I hate cancel culture. It's the worst thing in the world. I had a forty thousand dollar gig in a co- oh, so it was about you and the money you were going to make on a college campus. But now that all of a sudden we have real cancel culture of the students themselves, where you at, Bill Maher? Where you at, all the liberals, all the liberal Democrats who pretended to be so pissed about cancel culture? All of a sudden, when it's Israel, they're like, cancel, cancel, cancel. Right? Right? Of course. Yeah. So again, I, I I was looking for an example of a Jewish student getting threatened. Maybe one person in this demonstration engaged in anti-Semitic rhetoric. Something that I can like point to as like, okay, well, this is unacceptable, and this is the the real reason why. But no, I, nothing. And in fact, uh, the statements from the college itself make it clear that it's just. Oh, it was unauthorized. And by the way, as I had shared with you all yesterday on yesterday's show, Columbia had recently changed its rules when it comes to student protests, where they have to apply to be able to protest two days in advance and get permits. All of a sudden, and yeah. yeah, so because I was going to say, Anna, unauthorized protests on a college campus. Right. I right. believe that is about ninety-eight percent of all protests on a college campus. Yeah. <laughs> they're on all. They're the whole point is. That they're college kids who are animated about the topics, the issues, and they go to do a protest. Now they have to be bureaucrats, and and why is it unauthorized? It's unauthorized because it's against Israel. Okay, and look, I I would be shocked if pro is Israel students did the same exact things and they got kicked off of a college campus. Show me an instance. I've never seen it. Well, so, the, the university president or the dean isn't going to be called to a congressional hearing to be, you know, grilled about that protest, right? Yeah, and by the way, you know, pro-Israel right wingers in this case, yes, right wingers in the context of Israel come in and harass students all the time, and they call them anti-Semites based on the fact that they don't support Israel killing all those Palestinians, etc. They call them names, they and they and they. In essence, are supporting terrorism that is worse than Hamas. Now, Israel has killed 30 times the number of civilians. So, is anybody getting kicked off of campus for supporting Israel? You've never heard that once, right? You've never even heard the topic of, hey, should someone be kicked off of a campus for doing hate speech, saying killing Palestinians is okay, starving them to death is okay? That's never even considered. Okay. Come on. You guys are fair? Nobody believes that. One other thing I just want to read to you, um, just to end on a high note. So uh, Omar's daughter posted on X again today saying, let's go to graphic eight. Those of us in Gaza solidarity encampment will not be intimidated. We will stand resolute until our demands are met. Our demands include divestment from companies complicit in genocide, transparency of Columbia's investments and full amnesty for all students facing repression. I'll say one last thing, I'm Columbia alumni. I know the only thing they care about is alumni, right? So I'm alumni and I agree with her 100%. And I won't send Columbia a single dollar as long as they continue to work with companies that are sending money to Israel. Israel right now is an international pariah 
They've committed war crime after war crime. They've broken every international law there is. And there's a 1.1 million Palestinians starving to death as we speak. It's unconscionable and deeply immoral to send Israel a single dollar politically or economically. And none of you should ever go to Israel until they end not only this war, but the occupation. None of you should ever do business with Israel. Before I thought the BDS uh, you know, uh, movement was interesting, controversial. Now I don't find it controversial at all. I think you're immoral if you don't do BDS.